Black people were always just trying to find places where they could just live. There were free black communities all over the place, and Weeksville was one of many. Welcome to the Weeksville Heritage Center. My name is Alphonse. I'm going to be your tour educator. Let us walk outside, and from there, we'll learn the history of Weeksville. All right? Everybody follow me. Weeksville is a free black settlement founded in the year 1838. All right? During this time in America is slavery. But keep in mind, not every single black person was a slave. 1838, that was 11 years after slavery was abolished in New York State. The idea was to create this um, free and intentional community for African Americans. Communities such as Weeksville intentionally sought to live outside what was then the economic hub of Lower Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn and move out so that they could live their lives with safety and dignity and with refuge and really build what it meant to be an American society. At that time, 1838 to say 1850, this was all still farmland. The grid system was not in place yet. Eastern Parkway had not been built, would not be built until 1873. The Brooklyn Bridge would not be completed until 1888. You had to really want to be here to get here. Weeksville thrives throughout the 19th century. It's one of the longest free black communities. About 500 people lived here. At its height, Weeksville was 88% black and became the second largest free African-American community in pre-Civil War America. During this time period, all right, in Weeksville of 1838, the only people who are allowed to vote are men with land, all right? And so what you find in Weeksville is that you have the highest number or a higher percentage of property owners than any other free black community. So by owning land, these African-Americans, men, unfortunately, only at that time, uh, they had a measure of political power. They had their own institutions, which we think of today, that really makes a community thrive. By the year 1870, Weeksville will establish itself with churches, a school, an orphanage, a cemetery, and even a newspaper called the Freedmen's Torchlight. The Freedmen's Torchlight took on the role of not only sharing news, but also served as a way of sort of providing a well-rounded um, sort of education. The big names when people think of Weeksville, Moses P. Cobb, who appears in the late 19th century. He was one of the first African-American police officers in what would become the NYPD. Susan Smith McKinney Stewart came out of Weeksville. She was the first African-American female doctor in New York State and the third in the country. There is also Peter Vogelsang, um, who was one of the one of the older soldiers, but he um, absolutely fought in the Civil War in the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. So it was a number of factors that would lead to Weeksville simply being eroded. All right, Weeksville was not destroyed by like racial violence, unlike other black towns you may read about, like Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Rosewood in Florida. In 1898, when this city consolidates and we get its five boroughs and we get the city of New York, we then start to see a sort of urban blighting of the entire neighborhoods. By 1920s, 1930s, Weeksville starting to fall off the map slightly with the opening of the Brooklyn Bridge. But certainly by the 1950s, with urban renewal and redlining, it has all but disappeared. Now, the houses standing right here in front of you, these are called Hunter Fly Road houses. People of this community came together and decided to save these houses. In the year 1970, these houses received landmark status. That's what makes Weeksville Heritage Center an historic site, because we have the original houses on the original land that they were built. Today, the mission of the center has been to document, preserve, and interpret that history of this free black community and make it relevant for people today. There's so many opportunities to inspire people of all ages about the legitimate contributions that African-Americans made to not only New York City history, but to American history. And that's pretty exciting. <laughs>